I've been using monitor light bars for about six months now. I found that they're super easy to set up and easily sit on the top of your monitor. I've also found that light bars take up significantly less space on your desk's surface. And after using task lamps for over the last 10 years, I found that they just can't provide as much focused lighting as a light bar does. This more focused lighting paired with the ability to adjust the brightness and color of the light bar give them a huge advantage over the older style task lamp. But even though light bars do seem to be like the perfect solution for your lighting needs, they aren't perfect and do have some shortcomings. Let's take a closer look at the seven most common light bar problems and stick around for the end where I share a bonus tip on selecting the best light bar option for you. Limited color customization is the first problem I've noticed with light bars that I've used recently. Not all light bars offer as many color options for the light. Less expensive options like the $16 Snow Key Life only have three options. And this can be an issue if you're trying to match other lights in your space. I've also found that my eyes don't adjust as well to certain colors and if you're sensitive to this, it could definitely be a problem. The BenQ model that I've been testing has eight color options, but the price is almost seven times that of the Snow Key Life light. I found the brightness issues on a light bar are similar to the color issues as the brightness options in some of the light bars can be weak with some models just not offering enough range here. I found that some lights just don't get dim enough or sometimes bright enough or in even some cases they just don't do both well. In other situations I found that they don't offer enough of that right middle brightness balance. On top of this, models like the Basis just can be a bit of a nuisance when you try to adjust them. And this is definitely an issue if you like to switch between different levels of brightness throughout your day. Monitor fit can be a major annoyance with light bars. As mentioned in my intro, I found light bars to be fairly easy to set up. They sit on the top edge of your monitor with a weighted counterbalance to help hold them in place. And while this is a great idea, not all monitors are shaped the same way and getting this fit right can be difficult. Some monitors can just be too thin, others I found have a rounded back shape, and if your monitor is too thick, a lot of times the clamp systems can squeeze them just a little too tight for my liking. If you use a webcam, getting it to fit properly with a single monitor setup can be almost impossible with a large light bar. Depending on the size of the monitor and the light bar, there might just not be enough room here for both of them to fit. Moving your webcam to the side can create an awkward zoom call experience, not being able to look directly into the camera and view the screen at the same time. Monitor glare reduction is a huge selling point of all the light bars that I've tried. Almost all of the ads for these products make a point of promoting an asymmetrical light pattern from the light bar. This light glare is a major problem from typical task lights and desk lamps. The problem is that with all the models I've tried, with the exception of the BenQ, they've all had some level of monitor glare issues. If this is a concern for you, you may have to upgrade to the most expensive option, the BenQ, or in some cases, I found that you can tilt the light bar more outward towards you to reduce the glare, but this will create some other issues as well. The use of a physical button on a light bar versus a touch sensor can have a significant impact on your overall experience. A physical button will require you to push downward on the light bar, which I've found to unintentionally move the light bar on your monitor, and this can be very annoying. And when this happens, this means you're always having to move the light bar around. Now, on the other hand, Touch sensors won't require as much pressure and they tend to stay in place much better. If you're using a dual monitor setup with both monitors in a landscape orientation, having only one light bar can create an awkward light source. Because of how the monitors are positioned, it can be difficult to center the light. If the monitors are tilting inward, having the light towards the middle of the setup of each monitor will create a light source that sort of goes over the second monitor. Overall, if aesthetics matter, having just one light bar can just look off. If you have a setup with two monitors with one that's your main monitor and the other secondary, it likely won't be as big of a problem. The same is true if you're using three monitors with a main monitor setup, or in some cases, dual monitors that are in a stack setup. As a bonus tip, I've so far tried five different light bar models that range in price anywhere from $16 all the way to 109. The best option that seems to eliminate most of the problems in this video is the BenQ, but it's also the most expensive option. This means that it can be out of budget for some of you, especially if it's your first light bar. And even if you decide to splurge on the BenQ, it isn't perfect, so the decision can definitely be tough. 
If you're still not sure which monitor light bar is best for you, you should definitely check out our other video where we compare cheap and expensive light bars. Thanks a lot for watching.